I wouldn't keep him. You know, I've seen enough of Zach Wilson. All right? I've seen enough. This guy stinks. This Zach Wilson guy, <laughs> mm-hmm. he stinks at football. Yeah. I, I, now listen. He cannot be out on the field ever again for the Jets, and I'm going to tell you why. I know you disagree. I don't care who the hell you have to run out there. Do anything else. Zach Wilson's got to go. He's, he's done in New York. Biggest bust in NFL history's Ryan Leaf, Jamarcus Russell, Zach Wilson. Somebody defensively needs to walk up to Zach Wilson and say, ain't nobody come here to see you, Odin. Yeah, I hope you ready for the combat. Steve Nash, I'm about to bring the sun back. Forecast, looking bright for the combat. Can't ignore it, promise you can never sun that. I pray for it, get ready for the combat. Yeah, yeah. I think it's time for the combat. Can the New York Jets beat the Miami Dolphins? That's an easy question to answer. Of course they can. The bigger question is, will Zach Wilson be the quarterback that the New York Jets drafted? And an even bigger question is, how much is confidence worth to a professional athlete? We have all heard the story about Mike McDaniel and how he made a 700-play compilation tape to prove to Tua Tungvaluwa that he didn't suck. We're told that Brian Floor is so damaged, so broke Tua, that he needed a tremendous amount of positive reinforcement to understand that he could play in the NFL. It appears that it worked for Tua, but could it work for Zach Wilson? Obviously, you know New York. Zach Wilson plays football in the country's biggest media market. And Frankie's song about if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere is 100% right. The lights are bright, the opinions are strong, and the expectation of New York fans is off the charts. For all of Tua's detractors, you have to say he didn't have the biggest name in team history calling for his exit. Joe Namath, the Super Bowl champion the Hall of Famer, the golden boy in New York City, called for Zach Wilson to be given a bus ticket per se and get out of town. Zach Wilson's play was so bad that he was demoted to third string and basically had one foot out the door. And then something happened. The Jets quickly found out that the grass isn't always greener on the other side, and the rumor mill was that Zach Wilson had to be begged. They had to beg him to come back and play. And boy, did he ever come back. In his return to the starting position, Zach Wilson had arguably his best game ever as a professional and was named the AFC Offensive Player of the Week. And he found his confidence and his smile once again just a couple weeks ago you know obviously the musical chairs in the quarterback room and all that you don't expect and you know season was good at parts and then had its had its turn of events and so you know you never know i would just i wouldn't be surprised because of how the nfl works you know every week is is its own week we needed that as an offense you know and, and not the award but just the performance that i think we had um, as a group, I think just speaks a lot to just everyone's character of being able to get back in and, and do whatever they can to, to try and make things go the best they can. Obviously, this young man is absolutely feeling confident. And why wouldn't he? He's been through hell and back in just a few weeks. Listen to what he says here. And more importantly, look at his eyes as he's talking. He seems to have found that mojo that was missing. Hey, Worm, do you have an anticipation of what it's going to be like when you get back out there again? Whether you'll still have that same mojo? I know it's a totally, different, totally that. different team. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. Here's here's the thing: is that's that's the standard, right? I wouldn't say, hey, you know, in that game, you were doing anything differently. I mean, we were we were in the flow. We were doing. We, momentum was on our side. You know, when good things happen, then it snowballs in the right direction. I wouldn't say it was, you know, wow, that was different than normal of course it has been this year but that's our standard that's what we expect to have and so you know let's not overthink it as an offense let's go out there and just play ball and do the same thing you said you were gonna when you're in that that flow does it feel like everything's clicking like for for someone who doesn't play the position what, what does that feel like it just seemed like everything you were doing was working yeah and, and you just said me but like i'm telling you guys like as an offense everybody was clicking i mean receivers were getting open and they were making the 50-50 plays. Hack was calling an awesome game. The O-line was giving me more than enough time to sit back there and make plays. Like, I'm telling you guys, like, when you truly is 11 guys need to do a job on the field, like those guys, they did it, you know? And the quarterback gets more credit than, than is deserved, you know? But it's truly an offensive unit that went out there, and I thought everyone played well. And, um, 
you know, how can we get there again as an offense? That's the key. Zach Wilson understands that a big part of building confidence is building momentum and confidence breeds confidence. Uh, AFC player of the week, just kind of what that means to you. Yeah, I think it's exciting. Like I said to you guys, uh, I think it's really a testament to this offense. And, you know, we've, we've been going through it, obviously. And um, momentum was a thing for us in that game. And, you know, I just thought it was really cool. Everyone kind of rebounded. So I think that's something that we all get to share. And, um, you know, it felt good to, to have that flow as an offense and to, to score points and, and do what we expect to do every week. So, But there's a funny thing about confidence. It's contagious. It spreads. It's highly infectious. Here's a few of his offensive teammates and listen closely as they echo the same sentiment about the C word, confidence. How would you describe Zach's performance after everything he's been through this year and, you know, everything that went on last week to come out and throw for 300? You know, what's your main takeaway from how, how he played? I mean, uh, he did awesome. You know, uh, it's a testament to his character, you know, how much he's developed as a, you know, as a person, as a man, and as a professional. So I um, uh, thought he handled things well and uh, came out last week juiced up, ready for practice and everything, motivating guys in the, in the locker room. And, uh, you know, he showed, you know, uh, you know he, he fought for us and uh, we fought for him too. Just playing, man. He can he can make that throw. I mean, nine, ten times out of ten, which you can't say about a lot of dudes in this league, a lot of people in the world, man. He's really a special talent. and and. Um, like I said, man, it's all about confidence. He's and he's and he's he's got that. He's got that now, and it's um, you know I'm excited to keep working. I'm gonna keep working so I can be open for him. And I know the rest of the receiver group feels the same. We know we we believe in him, and and I know he believes in us. And we're just gonna keep building. But in order to beat the Miami Dolphins and their high octane offense, they are gonna need a Herculean defensive effort. In the earlier game, which the Dolphins won, you could actually see the desperation on the defensive team. They were sapped of energy and they knew that they basically had no chance to win. And they didn't have any chance to win because the offense was horrible, horrendous. One of the worst offensive displays I've ever seen. But now, see if you can spot a difference in the way these guys are approaching things. DJ, I just talked to Quinnen and I asked him, what is it about this defense? And you guys were able to hold CJ Stroud to under 100 yards. And he says, it's all about the secondary. So DJ Reed and Sauce and Michael Carter, so much love there. What do you say to that? Man, Quinn is a humble dude, man. He's probably one of the most humble superstars. I mean, you know, honestly, we feel that way about the D-line. Like Coach Tala always says, it starts with the D-line, and it's true. Uh, you know, those guys get after it every play. Um, they have a great rotation, so they're not tired, and they get after it. And, you know, we hold up in the back, when it, back end as well, so I feel like we complement each other very well. What's that like playing the type of ball you guys are and, like, destroying these top quarterbacks? <laughs> it's fun, man. It's a challenge. Every week, you know, when you see quarterbacks slicing and dicing teams for 300, 400 passing yards, and, you know, our coaches kind of, you know, put it on our mind that, you know, this is what they're doing, and we're seeing it on film. So it kind of, you know, we play with a little chip on our shoulder because, you know, we have a standard throughout the whole defense, but we have a standard especially in the DB room uh, no matter who we play, we're going to shut them out. That's just our mindset. We feel like we're the best. Um, me, MC, and Sauce feel like we're the best, like point blank period. So, um, you know, it's exciting, like, when we get the end result, but it, it always starts with, like, practice, just the way we practice, the way we work and walkthroughs, film. You know, our coach, Tony Oden, he does a great job getting us ready. Um, he always, you know, comes to us at a humble approach and really just, you know, he has, like, this humility about him, like, you know, there's, he always say, like, it's more meat on the bone. Like, there's always areas to get better on. We got to keep improving, keep improving. Even though we're playing great, there's always another level we could tap into. So, you know, we bought into that. And, um, you know, it starts with coaching. And then we got the right group of guys. You know, Sauce, first team all pro last year, phenomenal player. You know, I think he could put on a gold jacket when he's done. MC, in my opinion, right now is the best nickel, you know, from last year to this year with his body of work. So, we're going to just keep it going. The defensive players now seem energized. I mean, they almost seem, hmm, dare I say it, confident. Focused and confident, but there's something else. I'm all right, you know. You know I, do a little, I do a little something, something here and there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Straight belt, you know what I mean? How much fun is it to go out there and play the way you guys did and also with your offense playing the way they did today? This is the most fun game I've had, man. I mean, we was up, so, you know, they got to throw the ball, so we're able to, you know, make plays on the ball. You know, I was trying to get a pick and see if I get an INT, but I didn't get one, but we got the win, so I'm not tripping, but it's just fun. It's just fun knowing. It's just fun. It's fun knowing, like, you know, you up, so they got to throw the ball instead of, like, when we down, they be just running the ball all the time. So 
this was the most fun game for sure. Fun having that smile on your face. I know. <laughs> All smiles, man. Thank you. Did you hear that? The guys are having fun. The Jets are five and eight, have gone through a ton of adversity, lost Aaron Rodgers on the first drive of the season, and they're having fun again. That means they feel no pressure whatsoever. It means they are completely relaxed. And that means they're dangerous. Anyone who's ever played any competitive sport at a high level will tell you that an opponent that's relaxed, confident, Having fun, feeling no pressure, is one hell of a dangerous opponent that you have to come up against. Quinnen, what is it with this defense and when you go up against top quarterbacks? You held C.J. Stroud to under 100 yards. What was the game plan going in? We got phenomenal quarter, cornerbacks, man. Phenomenal defensive back court that's, that's playing lights out this year. Man, we got Sauce Gardner, DJ Reed. Uh, you got C.J. Mosley back there. You got uh, Michael Carter, who's been playing elite level. And those guys, man, they hold it down, man. They give us, the, us as a front opportunity to pass rush and get sex. And without them, man, we can't do our job and stuff like that. So uh, we just all try to play for each other. Uh, we try to make sure we get uh, get the ball out of the quarterback hands quick as possible, get sacks, frustrate the quarterback. And the defensive back trying to guard their mans at the high ability to get us to sack. So we all playing for each other, and that's the biggest thing that we always preach. And that's the thing that I feel like this defense and uh, separates ourselves from everybody else because uh, we play for each other at an elite level. So. You guys had four sacks. Talk about that defensive line. You had one of them. How much fun is it for you guys just go and eat? Because like you said, the offense is up. You were able to just go at it. Oh, it's super fun, man. But at the end of the day, we want to do our job to the best of our ability to help this team win football games. Uh, we don't really stat chase. Uh, we definitely love getting sacks. We definitely love winning football games especially. So whatever we can do winning football games, uh, that's the main thing. Winning the football game is way more than a stat, a stat any day. So our biggest thing was going out there playing against an elite offense like C.J. Stroud, the elite leader and elite quarterback, a young guy who's doing everything, every single thing right in the right way. He's going to be a Hall of Famer one day. Um, by the way he's doing things, man. So we knew it was going to be a big challenge. So to go in and do our job to the highest dealer was the main focus. How proud of you of Zach Wilson what this offense were able to I'm do? I'm extremely proud, man. Like, as, as a defense, extremely proud. You can see the wheels playing on a whole other level today as a team. Just to see Zach uh, have some success today after all the negativity stuff he's been going through and the small obstacles he's been going through, uh, to see him go out there and ball out, to see him do his thing out there, um, have fun slinging the ball and – Playing lights out, man. Have, smiling and just playing free out there, man. This gave us the opportunity that we got to do our job to the best of our ability just because Zach is um, executing to the highest level and balling out. So, Thanks, Quinnen. Thank you. Let me check my notes. No pressure, having fun, relaxed, and confident. And he also made sure to compliment Zach Wilson. If I didn't know better, I would think that this team is gearing up for the playoffs. But they aren't. It seems that they have come to the realization of where they are as a team and that they're very comfortable with it, obviously very relaxed and having fun with it. And that means they're looking forward to just getting on the field, wreaking havoc and just causing all kinds of anxiety and pain for their opponents. Now I want you to hear what the guy who's going to be lining up against Tyreek Hill had to say. Sauce Gardner is an all pro cornerback and listen closely and see for yourself if he doesn't just echo the exact exact same sentiments of his teammates. Man, he was just, he was confident, you know what I mean? You could just tell he was playing for the ne man next to him. You know what I mean? He was playing for his brothers, and he said he, he already told us at the beginning of the week. He told DJ, like, you know, I'm playing for y'all. I'm playing for my brothers. So, you know, uh, and I earned even more respect for him, for him. I already had respect for him, but that's even more right there for him to just be able to do that. And he took, he took a lot of chances today. Put a lot of, uh, had a lot of faith in his guys, Garrett, uh, Rupp, T. Comp, Brees, uh, Allen, all of those guys. He had a lot of confidence in them. He was giving them chances to make plays on the ball. So back to my original question. Can the New York Jets actually beat the Miami Dolphins? Absolutely, 100%. The New York Jets could beat the Miami Dolphins. The Jets are relaxed, confident, and most importantly, don't have anything to lose. On the contrary, the Dolphins are completely different. They are under a tremendous amount of pressure, they have an injury-filled team, and they have everything to lose. Nothing to lose versus everything to lose. Who do you think has more pressure? In my opinion, this is Miami's game to lose. The Dolphins are favored by 10 points and they're playing in front of their home crowd. Everything. And I do mean everything tells me that the Miami Dolphins should win this game. But everything 
told me the same thing about the Titans game, and we saw how that worked out. Miami should win this game and win it by 10 plus points, but there is no room for error, no room for mistakes, stupid mistakes, no room for mental lapses, no room for turnovers. The Dolphins have to be on point and they have to execute. Let's hope that Miami realizes that they have to come out the tunnel ready to take care of business and play a 60 minute game. Otherwise, it could be a huge disappointment for the Miami Dolphins and Miami Dolphins fans. Let me know what you think about the possibility that the New York Jets could beat the Miami Dolphins. Talk to you soon. Fins up.